So here we are. Well, in these images, almost. But by now, all the areas you see here that are not properly cleaned are done. The indoor space is ready for the orchids, but I'm not. <laughs> but at least the space is now cleaned up. It took a weight off my shoulders as I was on a massive time crunch. Question being, will the night temperatures hold while I go about dealing with this area? I shall admit that it had not had a thorough cleaning since mid-summer 2023. Because in the fall of 2023, I had a rib injury which made moving furniture impossible. Anywho, at the time of filming, it appears that tomorrow the big orchid shuffle will commence and the orchids will fill this space. So, to you. <laughs> because compared to the fall of 2023, if the orchids all are coming inside tomorrow as per the temperatures in the forecast, that is two weeks earlier than back then. However, it's not just indoors that needed attention, so let me take you outside and show you real quick what I have been up to there. Welcome to the patio. It's good to have you here. All these orchids and some others needed to be moved to the east side table, seeing as it may rain tonight, so they can get some of that, and hopefully throughout the following day they can dry out before coming inside. If it doesn't rain, then at least I have peace of mind when it comes to bringing them inside. At the moment, I feel a little bit as though I am the juggler of odds, hoping to have done the right thing when all the ifs, whens and buts questions have been answered. All the orchids you see on the rack will have to deal with some really dark conditions because the forecast does predict cloudy, rainy days for the next six days. And of course, I have a few in bud on that rack. So bud blast alert, here we come. However, they do have to come inside, see or see. And you know what is really upsetting? It is possible that my Cattleya Dinar Blue Heaven has all three new growths with sheaths that are chubby at the base. And I was so hoping to be able to see that Cattleya Dinard with three growths in bloom, which would be a first. Ay ay ay, fingers crossed. So what I want to do with the Ancelias on the top of the rack there is move them to the empty area by the neighboring fence on the west side because that is where they will get the first lick of sun during the winter months. But again, it's two weeks too soon because right now the east side still gets the first nice rays of sun. But then again, as it's going to be cloudy, that will take a week off of that. So might as well get that done. However, mañana, because when in Spain, por qué no? <laughs> So this was the Blooming Alley configuration throughout the summer with all my Rapiculus Cattleyas protected under the portico, but they are going to the tables by the hedge into their winter spaces where they can also get what Mother Nature has to offer. There are some though that I'm dubious about and they are staying under the portico and others are showing new growths, which I need to have mature before exposing them to wetter conditions. So I'm a little freaked out that the weaker ones will not have the energy to to push more new growths if their current ones fail. I have also been busy preventatively treating all of them for scale and well, some really needed it. Mwah. Now I have many Rapiculus Cattleyas under surveillance for scale, but the good thing, I suppose, is that I will have easier access to assess them on the daily from now on. I have also been busy with the little bits and pieces of floor space of the patio that I have, dealing with those before anything comes outside, as it doesn't hurt to give that a little once over. Removing excess debris and the deep south will remain as is for the time being. If I can get away with covering the angraecoids with woolly blankets for the nights, then I really want to extend their glam camping season for as long as possible. <laughs> I do see a spike in the sesquipedale variety bossery though, so there's that. And for now, these are the Rapiculus Cattleyas that I feel will be okay with being exposed to the elements. While they're not getting full sun here, they will get the brightest shade the patio has to offer. But can you spot the imposter? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to love and leave you with the blooms of the first three spikes on my Epicatanthe Sianju Gold Coast. With any luck, the other two spikes will bloom out just as magnificently. That would be a first for this orchid, so fingers crossed and please, if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the moral support, as my orchids are going to have a tough time in the coming six months, which, yes, rubs off on me.
So every little bit helps because I so appreciate being able to hang out with you in the comments. It really means a lot to me. Also, thank you for watching this quick look-see video. Wishing you a fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. For me and the kiddos, it is back to work. Take care. Bye. Oop, and I'm back. It's 24 hours later and I just wanted to show you the solution I came up with for the one window box which has a Myrmecophila orchid in it. I could not convert that window box into a semi-hydro setup and it would be leaking all over the floor indoors. So I have this spare XXL size tray and it's going to do a great job in catching the runoff when I water this orchid during the winter. Yes, it's going to look really nasty by the end of the winter because the floor space will have large orchids in front of it and I am not going to pull that tray out to clean it. But at least it will not be nasty for the floor. Some kiddos have made it indoors and I am starting the puzzle with the ones that I know have their designated space, like my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. Others have yet to make the move, but I'm really hurting now and super afraid of handling pots at the moment. So there's a little anxiety now for those I cannot move today and the upcoming night is 13 degrees Celsius, as are all the future nights. However, physically I'm really not doing well. My pain threshold has been met and if I'm unable to walk properly without carrying anything, then the thought of handling pots at the same time, well, <laughs> I banish that thought. Anyway, one more quick thing. I have now reinstated the fourth shelf of the glass shelf right by the window, something I have not used for the past four years because I used to have several real tall reed stem epidendrums that needed the high light this shelving unit provides. Seeing as I only have one of those left, it can go elsewhere and with that, I have somewhere to put the orchids that have extended leaves as well as catacetinae once they shed their leaves, have finished blooming and are in true dormancy. So thank you for staying on for this snippet. You are just as up to date with the current status quo as I am now. Bye.